hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. I'm paying you for practice in circus stunts. Gosh, Mr. Calvert, I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. ruining my harness. But Mr. Calvert, the chair slipped and I sort of just caught myself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Peg Oakley, playing when I hired you to clean and polish the saddles and other gear. But I have, Mr. Calvert, I have. Sure. Look, I did this one, and this one, and that one over there. What See? the hell? Here. Gee, thanks a lot. Here's another 15 cents for doing a nice job. Gee. You are only joshing. Of course. Say, are there any other chores you want me to do, like uh, clean up the yard or something? The yard? Uh -huh. Are you admitting you didn't do a good job yesterday cleaning up the yard? Oh, that's right. I did do it yesterday. Of course it was a good job. Do you want me to whitewash your stalls? It's worth 50 cents, but I'll do it for a quarter. Some other time, Tag. Gee, thanks a lot, Mr. Calvert. That's real nice of you. Hi, Mr. Calvert. Hi. Can I get in there? Yes, we can. Thanks, Hi, Johnny. Hi, Tess. How'd you make out today? Not too good. I chopped wood for Mrs. Perkins, and all I got was 10 cents and splinters in both hands. Gosh, so far I made $5.35, enough to go to the county fair. Gee, you're lucky. All I was able to make was a dollar and four cents. I guess I won't be able to go with you like we planned, eh? Gosh, that's too bad. You know, it's getting harder and harder to make an honest nickel. What we need in this country is more pay and chores for us kids. I guess you're right. Hey, that's my Uncle Joe. Hey, Calvert. Where are you going, Uncle Joe? Saddle Hill, Johnny. Can I go with you? Hello, Dixon. Hello, you call me? Yes, I... Looks like I need a new hub and a couple of new spokes. You can have it ready for me by the time I get back from Saddle Hill? I don't see why not. Good. Say, um, I'm gonna need a horse. Well, take mine. He needs a little exercise. Well, thanks. Hold it, Tag. going on? Who fired that shot? Mr. Dixon. He saved me from that rattler, Annie. It was crawling right for Tag when Uncle Joe grabbed Mr. Calvert's gun and bang, he got it. And from 25 feet away. You couldn't have done better, Annie. He shot right from the hip. Thought you didn't know how to use a gun, Joe. Never saw you wear one. Well, uh, that is the uh, beginning of his luck, I suppose. You better get back to the ranch soon, Johnny. You ever seen your uncle use a gun before, Johnny? No, I haven't. He won't even keep one around the ranch. Something on your mind about Joe? He was 25 feet away and he shot from the hip. So? So, when a man who doesn't wear a gun shoots like that, I figure it's time to learn a little more about him. You want some water? Nah, I want to go to that county fair. Yeah, it won't be any fun going to the county fair without you. How about Banker Willis? His windows need washing. Nah, he turned me down. Oh, you must have gotten him when he wasn't feeling so good. Come on, I'll go with you. I'm a sharp dealer, Mr. Willis. Sharp and honest, mind you. But in you, I reckon I've met my match. Well, look what you got. Seventeen fifty is an awful lot of money to pay for a broken pen and ink set. Yes, but that's a genuine antique. 
Just the same, I calculate I'll be lucky if I break even. Good day, sir. Good day. Holy Toledo. $17.50 for an old busted pen and ink set. We got lots of old stuff up on our attic better than that. You have? Sure. Uncle Joe's been after me to clean it out. Johnny, we're both going to the county fair. Come on. Hey, Mr. Wayne. Huh? Johnny's got an attic full of junk. I mean, antiques. Oh, he has? Sure. They're up at my Uncle Joe's ranch, about five miles from town. The Dixon Ranch, you can't miss it. And you can buy him cheap. Cheap? Is your uncle at home, son? No, sir. But he's been after Johnny to clean him out. Well, I'm heading in that direction anyway. I'll see you boys up there in a little while. Good. Let's get our horses. Oh, Writing. Yes, I know, but are you checking up on Joe with the state authorities? Mm-hmm. Well, if you ask me, you're wasting your time. Maybe. It's my duty as deputy to, to see, see if, if he's, he's a, a wanted, wanted man. man. <sighs> we do that very nicely together, don't we? Oh, Lofty, after all, Joe's our friend. We've got to trust our friends. You know, Annie, being a woman, you sometimes let sentiment blind your better judgment. And you, being a man, must always keep your mind open to suspicion. It's my job, Annie, you know that. Oh, well. Oh, Lofty, mm -hmm. maybe you ought to check up on little Johnny, too. He may also be wanted. Ow. Here's a talking machine that answer to you, Barter, might like. It's broken, Tag. Oh, yeah. Well, that ought to make it real antiquated. Gosh. An outlaw and a deputy were slain yesterday and another desperado captured when officers thwarted off an attempted bank robbery today. What you say, Johnny? Oh, nothing, Tag. I was just talking to myself. Here's some more antiques. Hey, Johnny, you don't look so good. Are you sick or something? I'll be all right, Tag. Hey, it must be that buyer. It's him, Johnny. Get downstairs. Right away. Hurry up, Johnny. We haven't got all day. Ah, good morning, sir. And a good morning to you, sir. Permit me to introduce myself. Homer Willoughby, antique dealer. Could I interest you in either any buying or selling? <laughs> <laughs> I'd go on the stage if I could put on the act you do. Well, how'd it work this time? Well, just the same as usual. I invested $17.50, and we're going to have plenty of dividends. Now, here's the layout of the bank. Here's the vault, the cashier's cage, and the office. All right, boys, it's up to you. I'll take the one who rode out.
Get up, mister. Come on, get out of there. All right, let's go. Anything worth taking, mister? You've had enough. Come on, climb down. Take off your coat and your hat. took my hat, coat, and Calvert's horse. What happened? He's one of two outlaws that robbed the bank. I was tracking him. Oh, so that's why he headed me in this direction. He figured you'd recognize his horse and go after me, giving him a chance to make a clean escape. Pretty slick. You think so? Quite a coincidence you're running into him the way you did. What are you driving at, Lofty? Nothing at all. You better come back with me to the office and make out a full report. I'll be very glad to. Here's your report. You forgot to sign it. Believe me or not, Lofty, I had nothing to do with those outlaws. I didn't say you did. No, but that's what you're thinking. Trying to trip me up with all kinds of questions. Even asking that outlaw if he knew me. It's a deputy's job to ask questions, Joe. Not the kind he's asking. Unless he thinks I had a hand in the robbery. I'm not altogether stupid, Lofty. Why don't you come right out and say you think I deliberately drew you away from that other outlaw? You don't really believe that, do you, Lofty? Annie, Lofty, Johnny's got enough money to go to the county fair with me. Ten dollars and fifty cents. Show it to him, Johnny. He got it from the antique buyer. Antique? You mean antique. Huh? Well, anyway, he bought some old things Mr. Dixon wanted cleaned out of his attic. Oh, so that's where you were. I wondered what had become of you. Well, we would have been back sooner, except we met Shorty Davis on the road, and... Hey, who's that guy? An outlaw who held up the bank. Holy Toledo. His partner got away. He tricked Lofty by making Joe change horses with him. Gosh, did they get away with much money? Close to $10,000. Don't you feel well, lad? I'll be all right. Just a little headache. Come on, lad. We'll pick up the rig and go on home. Excuse me. You sure took your time getting back here. Where's the bank money? I ain't got it. Idaho has. Didn't he turn it over to you? I got news for you. Idaho's in jail. What? When you two failed to return here soon enough, I figured something was wrong, so I went back into town and checked. Well, didn't he have the money on him when they grabbed him? No. He must have hid it somewhere. And wherever he hid it, we've got to find it, and we've got to get Idaho out of jail. That's going to take some tall doing. I don't think so, Hardy. It just so happens that among the antiques I've collected, I have a set of skeleton keys that'll open any door. And when the sheriff's young nephew, Tag, is busy selling me some junk, you'll be springing Idaho. Yeah? What about that girl and the deputy? What'll they be doing? They'll be out looking for you. I'll arrange that small detail. There's someone inside. 
Well, that's all right. Uh, take your time. I will. Mr. Well, Tag, they certainly don't look like antiques. However, I'll, uh, I'll give you 50 cents for the lock. Gee, thanks a lot. I'll be seeing you a little later, Miss Willoughby. All right, son. See you later. you well enough to fatten the wood box, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Hi. What's the matter? You still got that headache of yours? No, oh, it's worse than that. Much worse. Come on over here and sit down. I need some advice. Sure, Johnny. What's the trouble? Well, suppose you like someone very much. You trust him with your own life. And then something happened to make you think he was no good. What would you do, Tag? Well, Johnny, that's something a fellow's got to decide for himself. But Annie always says to keep on trusting your friends until you're dead sure about them. But if you think you've got troubles, listen to this. That outlaw Idaho broke out of jail a little while ago. And it was all my fault, too. Broke out, huh? Uh-huh. Annie and Walker are out looking for him now. Very good afternoon to you, miss and sir. What in the world? Relax, mister. Sorry to have bothered you, mister. We're looking for an escaped outlaw. We just thought he might have hidden in your wagon while you were busy someplace else. Oh, I quite understand, miss. I hope you apprehend the rascal. smelled a rat. Why should they? But if I'd have been driving as fast as you wanted me to, then that really would have looked suspicious. Well, we don't have to keep on crawling, do we? We're only a mile from the Dixon place. Patience is not only a virtue, but a safeguard. Remember that. Climb in. Johnny? Ah, you must be Uncle Joe. That's right, sir. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thank you. I don't recall you passing me on the road, Tag. Well, I took a shortcut over here. Oh, I just dropped by to see if the boys had any more antiques. I doubt it. Now, wait a minute. There's an old clock inside if you're interested. Indeed I am, sir. Come with me. Come on, Johnny. Now, this old clock was left to me by my grandfather. There's the buckboard. It's gone. Then Joe Dixon must have found it. Come on.
Frankly, I'll be lucky to break even. Hold it. You again. What do you want this time, my shirt? We'll take that bank, little smart guy. And don't tell us you didn't find it tight under your rig. I didn't. Well, this is an outrage. Shut up. I won't shut up. This is... Hand it over, Dixon. Or you won't live to spend a cent of it. He didn't find it. I did. It's buried out there in the wood pile. Watch him. Why didn't you tell me about this, Johnny? I couldn't tell anybody. I thought that you were mixed up in the robbery. Now, where on earth did you get that idea? In an old trunk, up in the attic. Oh. I got it. All right, Miss Oakley. Throw your gun away. Far away. Now back up. for this. What a day. But all this excitement has been too much for me. I, uh, I think I'd better see my doctor. Wait a minute. All you're gonna see is the inside of a cell. Just like your two friends here. My friends? Why, why, that's absolutely outrageous. I think you're wrong, Lofty. He stood up to him, let him punch him right in the face. That's right. It's just a cover-up act, Tag. He's really the brains of the outfit. You know, Mr. Willoughby, it's amazing. All of you clever crooks always forget one little detail. You forgot a wagon leaves tracks you can follow. And when we found no one inside, out in the road, we let you think you were absolutely in the clear. All right, all of you, pile in the wagon. It was my first and only crime. And when I learned the deputy had died, I swore I'd never wear a gun again. That deputy was your father, Johnny. I'm not your real uncle. When I got out of prison, I learned that you'd been left with folks who really didn't want you. Let me have you very gladly. You were only four then. I made up my mind that I'd do my best to take your father's place. Well, that's it, Johnny. I don't suppose you'll want to stay with me now. But there's one thing I am certain of. I wasn't the man who shot your father. You must believe that. I do believe you. Uncle Joe. Thanks, Johnny. Hey, quit it, Uncle Joe. You're breaking my ribs. Hey, come on. I won't be much good on the ranch with my ribs busted. Then you're not leaving me. Of course not. Hey, come on, Tag. We better get ready for our trip to the county fair. You bet. I knew we'd make it somehow. Yeah. 